Hey everybody, welcome. We're going to be covering the Alt-V JavaScript development today. We're going to start off with the workspace, and the workspace is probably the most important part about your setup. So, what we're going to, going to, what we are going to do is we're going to head over to altv.mp. We're going to go to the download section, and we have two options here. We have a client, which is something that we're going to need. So go ahead and download that and as well as the server. We're gonna go ahead and use the beta version of the server. And I'm gonna go ahead and tick Node.js, sample config, and an example resource pack as well as the uh, data files as well. So if I hit download here, we're gonna go ahead and get that. And while that's downloading, we're gonna go ahead and grab the latest version of Node.js. I recommend at least version 12. And after that, we will get Visual Studio Code as well, which you can get at code.visualstudio.com. So after installing both of those, we're gonna go ahead and work with the zip file that we've been given here. So this is how we get started. So I'm gonna have this on my desktop. Uh, I recommend you install your client in a location that is not your desktop. For example, I have mine based in another folder. Um, over in here, I believe. So as you can see, we have it all inside of here. And one thing I would recommend doing is you run the program first, make sure it all loads into Alt V all fine. If it doesn't, try running it as administrator. And there's a few other troubleshooting tips on the forums, but the big thing here is we're gonna open this configuration file here. And inside of here, we're gonna actually have a build and a branch. Now, depending on what you download, you may not have the beta branch, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and type in beta for our branch. And for debug, we're gonna set this to true. If it doesn't exist, be sure to add this in there. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and save that and close that out. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start with our server. So we need to extract it into a location. I'm gonna put it into this folder called tutorial. So I'm gonna take all this, drop it right in there, and we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the evidence. All right, so let's open this up. And inside we're gonna see a list of EXEs, configurations, DLLs, all that good stuff. And let me kind of explain what you're seeing here. This is how we start it. Inside of data, this is where we get our vehicle model hashes and things like that as well. So if you don't have these and you're trying to spawn a vehicle, this is probably the reason why that you're not spawning any vehicles is because you don't have this. And on top of that, we have modules for our node module. So that's what allows us to work with Node.js and JavaScript to write our server. And then the last thing that we have is the configuration file. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the configuration file. So right click the desktop and if you installed code, you should see this option here to open with code. So we're gonna open that up. And here we are, we have Visual Studio Code opened up here. Now, one of the first things I'm gonna do uh, there is an extension or a couple of extensions that I'd actually recommend. So uh, one of the first ones, bracket pair colorizer. It helps understand the code a bit better, separates it better and all that sort of stuff as well. And a prettier configuration file because it'll keep your, um, it'll keep your code rather clean. And I'll go over how to set that up in just a second. And the last one is the Alt-V autocomplete. So this is something that I wrote as it's something that I cannot develop without. It helps with a lot of the natives and all sorts of things along the way. So you'll see me using this throughout the entire um, tutorial series as it makes working with natives and all the other complicated stuff rather uh, easy. So now that we have that, we'll go ahead and close out of that. And let's go ahead and look at some of the stuff that it came with. So we had an example resources folder and we have something called chat and all that stuff as well. So the first thing that we're actually gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and delete these two, the free roam and the voice chat. We'll just get rid of those. We're gonna keep the chat around because we're gonna probably end up using that. So inside of server CFG, this is what we use to um, work with the part, with our uh, work with the code and write our own game mode and that sort of thing. So the first thing I'd actually recommend is we need to, add a debug and we're going to set that to true and we're actually going to try running it. So if I hit control shift and then back tick or tilde key, it looks like this, if that helps, or this, if that helps. 
So it'll open up a command prompt or a PowerShell. I recommend PowerShell because it kind of functions a little bit like Linux. It's like you can type ls and you'll get a list of everything that's inside of a directory. So now if I type dot slash server.exe, it's going to go ahead and run. And it is. So that's how we start up the server. And as you can see, we can now connect to it if we just connect to... It's not necessarily this host. It's actually a local host. So it'd be 127... 0, 0, 1, and then 7788. Eight. That's usually how you connect. So I don't recommend changing this unless you know what you're doing. Same with the port and the players and everything else as well. So let's go ahead and set up a new resource for us to work with. So we're going to make a resource. We're going to call it, uh, we're just going to make it a, a folder called example inside of resources. So this is where all of our resources will go. And there are two additional folders that I would recommend adding as well. One of them is called server, and the other one is called client. And inside of chat, we have a resource CFG. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of the stuff that's inside of here. And we're going to go over to our server here. We do new file, resource CFG, and we're going to paste that in here. And the only other thing that we're going to change is we don't need this line here about HTML. Instead, we're just going to do client slash and then star, and that's going to get everything inside of the client folder to look for and include in the compilation when we're uh, compiling our code and things like that. Um, and the last thing is we want to change these to a different uh, format. So the first one, we're going to call it uh, server for the main, so server.mjs. And the last one's going to be called client.js. Uh, we can actually make all of these MJS if we want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and we're going to do client slash, or this one's actually going to be, uh, I'm sorry, server slash. And then this is going to be client slash, just like that. So now to make these files match, we need to create them. So inside, we don't have anything inside of these two folders here. So we're going to do new file. We're going to do client MJS. And then the last one, we're going to do server MJS. Great. OK, so now we have all those set up. And we're going to do a little console log here. We're going to call it test. And we're going to go down to server.cfg. And we're going to type in example here, because that's the name of the folder. So just like that. And we're going to go ahead and try running it. As you can see, we got a little console log that says test, which is exactly what we want. So now that we have that, we now have our initial workspace set up that we can begin working with. So in that regard, that is the end of this first brief lesson on the workspace. And after this, we'll be heading into beginning to work with the code and understanding how the structure of server and client interacts and things like that as well. So there we go.